Okay. Hello, thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. It's great to be here. It's my first time at NATSCA. Uh, very friendly, all of you, uh, but not my first time here at this beautiful museum. I came here almost 10 years ago as a PhD student. I'm Rula Papa, a Senior Curator of Fossil Mammals at Natural History Museum. And today um, I'm going to present some mammoth results. <laughs> so this is a mammoth project, that's the first slide. And I'm looking forward just to show some of the results and also some of the workflows, plans and lessons learned during this uh, mammoth uh, project. So. Uh, it started in 2020, actually, um, the initial sort of uh, correspondence between uh, us and Dr. Paul Bates here um, in, in this, so I just use that point. Yeah, so Dr. Paul Bates um, emailed us actually with an official offer in October uh, 2021. Uh, to offer this unique collection that they were housing in Harrison Institute in Seven Arts in Kent, um, the David Harrison collection. Uh, and this is when we start all the admin and everything um, just to explore, you know, whether this was a really interesting and it wasn't a really interesting offer for us. So the, um, the Harrison Institute was founded in the uh, 1930s and basically all the Harrison families, uh, they converted their house to an institute in 1930s and this is when it was called the Harrison Zoological Museum. And uh, David Harrison himself, he was uh, very passionate about paleontology. He traveled around the world, but he collected not just modern uh, specimens, taxidermy, but also fossil remains. And he published a lot and collaborated a lot with former museum um, curators like uh, Jerry Cooker and Andy Curran. And he, uh, he collected rare fossils from uh, three SI uh, sites, um, quaternary and paleogen dating sites. And um, that was really, really an important sort of um, information that just that the initial sort of correspondence that we had with uh, Dr. Pe um, Dr. Um, Paul Bate uh, to start to start my interest just to learn more about uh, Harrison and about the collections and about everything. So from this initial correspondence as a curator from where you start, I think the most important is just to go and see uh, how the space, the collections look like. So um, very, um, very soon after that initial correspondence in October 2021, I visited the institution and I went there and uh, uh, looked through the different sort of rooms. So here you see one room where you can see the different kind of cabinets that uh, the material was stored, laying uh, cabinets to store small, tiny mammals, um, a little bit of different displays, uh, other sort of cabinets and uh, and and rows to store other medium and large um, large mammals. So there, there was a big range, another interesting room with overcrowded specimens, different kinds of conditions, different limitations, different kinds of issues. As I can see, all your faces just shaking. And yes, I was feeling the same. Um, but uh, that didn't stop me. Uh, so um, in uh, 2022, and after seeing uh, different sort of resources, talking with different stakeholders internally, externally, I put together um, a case and uh, successfully I've managed to um, gather all the relevant information and, um, and negotiate uh, this um, this purchase and um, and I over so the whole project um, and this is really one significant collection uh, and important collection because that the museum has acquired because it has national and interna international interest and you can see here uh, a really um, good table which um, which I thought it would be mentally helped me to just narrow down and go through the due diligence that um, needed to be done in order to uh, proceed with purchasing this collection. Uh, and, and you can see also some of the key sort of sites that um, this collection uh, included. Uh, and I collaborated with 
across different sites um, in the museum. So uh, this table was used and, and uh, looked through the registry team. So um, I, we all agree that this is really an important um, AQ and we should proceed. And it ticked quite a lot of boxes because um, it, it showed a really good um, sort of uh, potential for public engagement, for further research, but also was in line with um, NHM um, priorities and strategy to 2031, which is securing these important collections for the future generations. So, right, lots of admin, lots of workflows. Um, and honestly, it took us eight days to move over 30,000 specimens, but it took more than two years just to draft all of the, the, meet, the workflows, the plans. Um, but it was the moment um, that uh, we were ready to, to plan the move and uh, the decision was made that uh, we really need to team up with more people and we teamed up uh, with um, NHM and Locked uh, Moves um, people, this fantastic team and uh, the fossil mammal curators, uh, they group the, the move in two phases. One was done in January 2023 and the second was in April 2023. First day, uh, what you do is just again have an initial sort of tour with the team, go through the workflow, label clearly the different rooms, organize uh, where is going to be your wrapping sort of area, where is going to be your lab area and where, where do you start. So we, get, we went through all of these um, important details and then um, we start packing. So um, there was an initial plan. So I, I had a plan A, I had a plan B. As you will see, I ended up having a new plan uh, at the end um, because nothing can be easy. Um, so uh, the plan A was uh, that, especially for the specimens that they were storing these lane cabinets, we, they were the most uh, fragile and the small tiny specimens that we will basically, because we, of the limit of space, limit of time, we will basically just use the lane to move as they were. So basic more wrapping, using lots of tissue to secure the specimens as they were inside the Harrison uh, little boxes, secure also uh, the drawers with additional um, acid-free tissue, and then try and wrap a metal throw with a clean film. Yeah. It was a nightmare, it, it, it didn't really went uh, as we wanted, but we did it and we've managed the first day to um, uh, to really wrap and have ready for the move. Um, a few throws, as you can see here. Day two, good news. So IPM um, uh, risks were identified mold risks were identified and basically we had to come up with a completely new plan uh, so um, as we were on site uh, we got in contact with um, colleagues at uh, NHM, uh, IPM managers, conservation, uh, senior uh, conservators and, um, and we basically uh, cleaned um, came up with a different plan. So everything uh, was labeled and we had to move everything outside the, the cabinets, store them in, um, in useful boxes. And the decision was made that everything will be uh, freezed. Although we don't freeze usually, fossil mammal material, that was uh, the decision that we had to, to make. And, um, and that's how we had to go ahead. This is uh, another way that we use to store, uh, to, to move, to wrap uh, medium um, and large uh, size specimens. And you can see that we used like a sausage sort of uh, protection, layer after layer, plastic, um, uh, bubble wrap and lots of tissue uh, in between. Here you see some oversized uh, specimens, how we wrap them, again, teaming up 
work with the right attitudes of smiling, you know, and keep going, keep going. The same thing I'm doing now because I have five minutes to go through uh, 30 slides. Um, and uh, yes, the right attitude can be also seen here in Neil's face. Can you see his face? Yes, this is us doing also the move. So we didn't use any courier. We load the vans that we hire from the museum and we did that just five of us, possibly mammal curators and NHM um, moves team with the right attitude. I think that's all you need. Post move. So we moved everything to um, our West London offsite store. First, as I said, we had to basically uh, grant a facility use uh, for the majority of the specimens. Not all of them, some they had to be excluded. So you see here uh, some amazing uh, colleagues doing uh, hand uh, cleaning of um, some of the most fragile specimens. So all the teeth, uh, other fragile specimens were hand cleaned with Hoover before moving to, uh, spe to the space where other and it's an important material is stored. Second problem to um, overcome was the mold and the pyrite uh, oxidation. So uh, NHM and, and local conservation team jumped in and teamed up with us. Uh, they helped us unwrapping everything. So we use different kinds of areas to unwrap the medium large specimens. As you can see, maps were used where we have uh, all the different boxes, numbers, because everything has been properly labeled. Here you see um, NHM and Locked Conservation Team uh, going through the molding process. Everything has been uh, I then everything that has been identified with mold or pyrite issues has been uh, treated and cleaned. So here you see also an innovation, innovative approach um, of dealing with multiple spe specimens that there um, uh, had pyrite problems by conservation team with uh, marvel seal tents and uh, moving and jumping to documentation, which we started only in March, I have just two minutes, um, and uh, basically we again uh, used workflows, templates, we teamed up with uh, NXM uh, collections, move assistance, but also for the documentation. So here you see how we, we dealt with the documentation of medium large specimens, and here you see how we dealt with the documentation of tiny uh, little specimens and basically all the specimens that we've been through uh, um, up until uh, today, they have been assigned with an NXM number and then we kept also records of all the Harrison numbers and we teamed up with A&I team and we are still uh, ongoing and the DMT team and we are using uh, workflows to integrate into the database system the Harrison um, uh, index cards and the, we use also narratives based on the field notebooks uh, and this is a full record uh, on what we aim to do for all the 30,000 specimens that we moved. Thank you so much. Uh, I know that I don't have enough time. It's maybe one, maybe less than one minute. Uh, that's the conclusions. And this is how I thought uh, I can summarize uh, the most potato brain that uh, uh, a manager has as lessons learned. So uh, I would suggest three different phases. Think about um, uh, the activities. So um, admin, plan, and delivery, I would say, are the three main phases. And then uh, try and, and think about activities, about tasks, and how maybe some tasks, some activities may trigger some other uh, problems. And plan, plan, plan. And it will never be enough. Thank you. <laughs> Right, I suspect everybody's got thousands of questions to ask, though. Who fancies going first? They're holding back, they're holding back. Yes, yes, actually, yeah. I'm happy to go to talk later, but I think I want to ask a question. Oh my God, if only I had had your penultimate slide when planning, <laughs> I think it moved. But, uh, do I dare to ask how much all of that cost? Because it's all well and good donating collections, and we are happy to have the collections, but the collections come at a huge cost in terms of storage and moves and digitization and then long term storage. But have you? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's a, a very important question to ask um, yourself before go forward. And I think you you can always estimate the exact amount. It's only when you start doing things. So it costs ten thousand as a purchase, but it costs us more because of the resources that we used uh, internally um, and and all the admin. Uh, and that 10,000 is not the value of this collection, I have to stress, because uh, there are type figured, really important specimens. So this this was also something that I had to consider when I put together the case. Um, and, and, you know, I tried to estimate the different Course, but it's always very difficult just to set to to estimate this. In um regarding the space, so uh, again we have uh, come up with like expansion space and different sort of plans, uh, and I think we are pretty much of how I initially estimated the space that we would need for this collection. Laura, do you want to? Uh, Laura, I think um, when you initially went into the collection, were there any boxes that have been accounted for the top of the Very only storage and some and some and uh, so the question was whether there were any uh, losses because of the way that the collection was stored in um, in that uh, building. Uh, well. Yes, but uh, w this is a good question because I went before proceeding with uh, the whole purchase and the whole um, uh, process, I went twice to visit the place and these two visits, I couldn't see the problems that I saw when we actually start taking out the specimens and, and do the work, you know, and, and I think this is something that we need to consider um we need maybe to do like a trial before we just go ahead um and move so for example we uh, found the second day the ipm risk which i kind of couldn't see when when i went in these two uh, initial visits and and then on the third day when we moved to the rooms further inside the house that they had no windows we found the mold uh, issue um, and then when you have hands on uh, you know specimens hands on specimens you see also the specimens in more details and this is where we discover the pyrite observation so I think you really need to do a small trial before you proceed with. Mm -hmm.